out of all of the maps in Overwatch, at least the ones that are still available in the game, rest in peace Paris and Horizon Lunar Colony, there is one map that I've always had a bone to pick with how it was designed. It isn't even that I hate the map or think that it isn't fun to play on, though it isn't that great either. I would honestly put it mid to low tier if I were rating all the maps in Overwatch. All the problems I had with this map have just been further amplified with the shift to a 5 versus 5 format with the introduction of Overwatch 2. And that map is Noombani. Noombani has been plagued with issues ever since Overwatch 1, where it was pretty notorious, at least for a lot of players, as being a map in which you were forced to run dive to try and attack the first objective, or you would be almost guaranteed to lose. And in Overwatch 2, this was made even harder to accomplish with D.Va or Winston, since they no longer have another tank to work with them to try and take the high ground away from the five people that are usually stacked on top of it. Before we get any further, please subscribe if you haven't. I make a lot of Overwatch discussion and analysis based content. So if that's something you enjoy, then please subscribe. Also, for the rest of this video, I'll be going on unscripted so that it lines up better with showing off the map. So please bear with me as I try to go through this, since we'll be talking about a lot of specific defensive strategies, as well as, at the end, one of the best strategies I've found for capturing the first point on attack, and how I might redesign first point at least to make it much more fair between the two sides. Also, as a post-recording note, I'm sorry this is really long. I spent a very long time talking about defensive strategies, how to hold, why they don't work, and what forces this map to be played in certain ways. Since I've seen this map so many times be played and end in exactly the same way. So I'm sorry if it gets rambly, I'm gonna try to cut it down to the least amount of time as possible. But anyways, I hope you enjoy. And hopefully this does end up helping you if you ever get Numbani in the future. Alright, so here we are, the wonderful world of Numbani. This is a map that was completely absent from Overwatch 2 when it first came out. Not sure if it's due to bugs or because they just didn't know how to balance it properly for 5v5. Due to how many problems the balance had in Overwatch 1. And as you can see, it looks pretty much the same. Because when they added it to Overwatch 2, they basically changed nothing. They put a car here. I'm pretty sure this car was not here before. I swear it wasn't. But yeah, that's what they did. That's all they did. They put a car here. Very nice. So just to go over a common defensive strategy, usually you'll have both supports playing up here on the high ground. You'll have a damage character playing right up here as well. Usually your tank will be playing in this corner here so that they can very easily go and rotate to this high ground if the attackers try to go that way. And then usually your second damage will either be playing up here with the rest of the team or if it's like a tracer or someone that has mobility they can also be playing right over here and play this corner so that they can be present if the enemy team starts trying to push through this corridor because this is a very easy choke point that you can spam people out on and of course because you have you usually always run some kind of mobility tank like a diva or a winston on defense so they can always easily rotate over to here and hold this door if the attacking team tries to go up top on this side the alternative is if the defending team is running a Reinhardt, the Reinhardt will just play right up here. But other than that, it will still be the same. You'll usually have a damage here with the Reinhardt. Both supports will usually be back there together, just because it's very hard to dive all the way from main to that top right area. And then you'll have another DPS playing right up here with them. Now as for why dive isn't that good on this map anymore, it's because you don't have the other tank to peel for the dive character. And unfortunately, running a Winston, if he dives top right, right over here, how are you going to keep your Winston alive while he's trying to dive five people on the high ground? Potentially, it could be four. Usually the tank is there. This DPS up here will also be able to suit the Winston. There's not really that much cover preventing that from happening. So what do you do? Oh, uh, well, your Ana cannot heal from here. So if you have an Ana, she has to play way up here. 
in the middle of the open in order to heal the tank. The only other place that she can play from is up top. But if there's a DPS playing up top, then they're just gonna eat Urana alive. So there's not really any good way for a tank to try and dive top right high ground and still be able to receive support from the rest of their team. Because of that, this map sometimes just boils down to whichever team's damage characters are able to get a pick. Because if you do have a sniper that gets a pick, uh, a hand soap, or a window maker, they're, they're both pretty good at doing that. But yeah, it's a very hard point to take. Especially if you try and go main. And if you try to go top left, well, this is a very hard place to take because it's being subbed through this tiny choke point. And this this DPS will have this cover to play around. The tank will come over. The other DPS will be able to fire at you from over here. And you can't do anything about it. It also does not go well in most cases. Again, unless you have a really cracked DPS that hits a couple of good shots and is able to take out one of the DPS or supports on the other team. And then you can kind of just run in off of that. But yeah, this whole first point is very difficult to take on attack. But whenever I play this map, usually it always ends with this first point. Whoever can take the first point wins. And that's because while the first point is very, very defender-sided with how much access to free high ground they have and how hard it is to take it from them, the rest of the map is kind of very attacker-sided. Albeit in a very weird way. So just to kind of talk about why, it isn't because the positioning the attackers have is good. Defenders have some very good options available to them, especially here. They have all of this high ground that they can utilize. This is really good cover. And while, again, attackers also have access to this flank route where they can come up the staircase and go here, usually you can just pressure them out this is the only access to the high ground that they have. Aside from, like, someone insane tries to flank all the way around back and go up there. Or you have characters with mobility. But other than that, this is the only access they have. Someone tries... It's not very easily diveable because... This is main. You can't make that jump very easily. And if you try and jump there, then you're just at the same point as if you had gone around flank route. But despite this being very defender-sided, the reason I say this the second two points are attacker-favored is because the attackers only need to win one fight. Because in order to get to any good defensive positioning, you have to give up all of this progress before you get here. Because the thing is, until you get to that point, the attackers kind of have the advantage. So usually your tank will want to hold a corner. So if you have a tank holding this corner, it's basically at their spawn. You're not going to be able to get much done. If they get close to you and start pressuring you, you can't take a fight here because they have their spawn right there and your only location to fall back to is in this tiny room where if you have supports that are playing main, they usually play around there, uh, you completely LOS them. They cannot heal you. You will just get... They will, the other team, the attacking team, will just come in here and they will eat you alive. So this corner is a no-go. So the next corner we have is this corner, which is pretty decent as well. It's not the worst. But again, the problem is once the enemy team gets close and are able to start like pressuring you harder and forcing you to fall back. Okay, uh, your shield's going down, you're playing Reinhardt, you're getting low on health. Oh, I gotta get back so my supports can heal me. Let me get behind this corner and- oh. This isn't safe. <laughs> this whole corner, you can't take a really good fight here, because if you try and fall back to around the corner, there's just this massive corridor that... If someone- if the enemy DPS have a soldier main, the soldiers just go like... Flip. 
and just kill you outright. So you can't really hold here as well, like hard hold at least. You can play here, but then usually as soon as the other team starts getting close, you're going to want to fall back until we get to this corner, which is actually a very good defensive location. First of all, you have this car, which can block a lot of your body while you can still able to do stuff. You can throw out fire strikes on Reinhardt, but this, this car here will cover up a lot of your body and protect you. It's a very good cover. Right here is good cover as well. Your supports can play very safe. They can play up there. They can play like way back here. Blank routes. There is not really any that pose a problem. The only good one is here. And even then, if you have like a DPS, a Soldier 76 or a Cassidy on this high ground, they can very easily shut down anyone who's trying to use these flank routes, or at least call them out for your team and prevent them from coming out behind you. It's very different from if you were to hold, say, this corner right here, where you have to look out for this, uh, this flank route, you have to look out for that flank route, up there, through here, and the attackers kind of just get all of this whole building of space to work with. And the same with holding this first corner as well. There's a flank route that goes from the attacker spawn. They can send a Soldier 76 or a Tracer again to you straight through here. Uh, if your supports are playing here, they basically have line of sight to them from way over here and you can start pressuring them. Then they take this space and now they can pressure your tank if you're trying to hide in here. They can just pressure the back line. It's not very good to hold up here for too long, which is why you have to just keep giving up space until you get here where you can actually hold your ground and make a good defensive hold. But that just creates the problem of the attackers only need to win one fight really before they get to capture the second objective. Like, almost every time I play this map, it is one fight per part of the map. Just because while you can, again, hold this angle and poke and play with your team, usually when you start getting pressured, you have to go way back and keep falling back until you get to that point. This is maybe the one place where you can commit to a fight and die, especially if the card is right here. Just because if your entire team does die, you can probably respawn before they get too far. Like, they'd probably be around here when you respawn. Or when you get close enough, and then you can come up from high ground and try and re-establish control. But you definitely do not want to take a fight here, because if you die, they will cap. You will not have enough time to re-establish control over high ground and do anything with it. So after that, this takes us to third point, which is more of the same thing. Corners you can hold. This corner. Biggest problem here. You can't really fall back if they start moving up. Your supports have to play like right there, which while it's not bad, it's also not the greatest just because attackers usually have control over this high ground. For the sole reason that there is no point in defenders playing from it. If we were to go up to this high ground on defense, the biggest problem is if I'm playing here, if I'm Soldier 76, this is not a super good angle. Especially when, you know, the attacking team can just come up here and they usually will have characters that do just go through this path. Just any DPS will usually go up here. You can have the entire team go up here in a lot of situations. It's probably the best way to take this part of the map. And then if they sew up and you're here a soldier, uh, you just have to drop. You cannot, you cannot try and take a fight with someone in here from up, out there. You cannot. You you have to drop and give it up. So there's no point in really playing up here. So if the attackers get control over this area, they have so much free reign while they're basically directly on top of you if you're holding this corner unless you have a diva or a winston and even then 
they can easily just sub you off of this high ground if you try and come up here and fight them. If there's a couple of members of the attacking team up here. So this corner right here. Good to again take and poke. But when the other team starts taking space and getting up here. You're going to want to usually give up that space and defend this corner instead. Because from this corner, your supports can play way back here, way back here, even up on that high ground where they are very safe and protected. The only way to get through is to go this whole flank route around and then go up here, which by that case, you'll know about it. You'll be able to call out the flanker and also... This is very good if you can catch someone out here and kill them pretty easily on a lot of supports as well. Or if you have a Soldier 76. And this is a very good defensive position if they try and come through this way. The only other way is if they go this way and then loop around, which I almost never see happen. So it's good for your, good for your back line to play here. Uh, you still don't have that much to fall back to. But usually, you don't have to because your your front line is going to be up here with you playing like this angle, playing these angles back here. They can even flank and play this angle for a little bit. Try and get some cheeky picks off if you have a Cassidy. But aside from that, this is the main corner that you're going to be holding when defending third point. And it kind of just has the same exact problem which is that you are giving up all of this cart progress to hold at this corner. If you get to the end, they only need to move it like 20 meters before they cap. And it's usually very hard to take control back because you're going to come out through these tiny doors and they're going to have control over this high ground, control over that. Because uh, you can't actually put people up here, if you did not know. They can go all the way up here and stand up here. Of course, it's not super great because you can just be killed. There's not a lot of cover. This tree is not real. Bullets go right through it. Like, the base of the tree is real, but these branches, they don't exist. They're not, they're, they're not a real tree. Same with this tree. Not, not a real tree. Bullets go right through it. Yeah, and because first point heavily defender sided, usually if you take that, because the other two points are very attacker sided, you usually end up full capping the whole map, which just takes you straight back to first point, seeing who can capture it. And it is not that fun because of that. Which is bad, because I don't think the rest of the map is too horrible. I just think they need to add a little bit more cover to some parts of it to make it easier to take fights at places like right here. Because, like, they put this here. This is new. This was not here before, but what the fuck does this do? What is this cover? Who is going to play around this? Like, this is cosmetic. They put this here for fun. Like, it, it's some of the design decisions with trying to rework this map are kind of just weird. Because I swear this is new in Overwatch 2. If this is in Overwatch 1, I'm going to be very surprised. Because I swear that this was not here before. I think maybe even this wasn't here either, but I don't know. I've never tried to play this corner before. But you also already have this corner to play around, so it, it doesn't come into play that often. Maybe if you're a Reaper... But other than that, no, it's not that useful. So that's the biggest problem with this map. Because if you're attackers, you can just get the cart to here, and then you just build up five ultimates, use them all at once, and then you cap. And then you just do that again for point three, which takes you all the way back to first point. And now, as I said, when they first enabled this in competitive, which I believe was season 2, out of like the 10 games I played on it, I won 9 of them. And it's because I found a strategy and told people to do it, 
and it usually worked. And that is... You want to play a brawl style comp, like a Reinhardt, uh, Ramatra. It's something that can just go in and take space and be aggressive. And what you want to do is instead of trying to go main or dive high ground, you want to maybe even take a Lucio. You just want to speed run through this corridor and you want to go in here. Now, if the other team chases you, and their tank and their damage are trying to fight you here, they are separated from the rest of the team. If they are here, their supports do not have line of sight with them. I've had a lot of games where the other D.Va tries to come over here and fight us, and we just kill the D.Va because no support can help her when she's trying to fight us in this area. Same if there was, like, Usually people play Torb here because there's a lot of good turret spots and the Torb will be the one that plays on this side because he's very bulky. Soldier will probably play on that side. If the Torb tries to come and fight you, you can just kill him. It's very hard for him to get help or support over here and he is fighting a 1v5. So if they do that, you turn around and kill them and then after those one or two kills, it should be very free. But on the chance that they are smart and they don't just try and fight you here, and they instead try and just go back over there. What you want to do is you just want to slowly aggress on them from this angle. You don't need to full brawl go in. Honestly, that might just be the better strategy, but mainly what you're going for is you want to force them back. Because while this high ground is very good, the one downside is that if you're under attack, this little wall that you can't even use, you have to like be way over here to try and line of sight with it. This is the only cover you have. If you're taking damage, if you're under attack while you're playing this high ground from this corridor, the only thing you can do to like protect yourself is give up the high ground and drop. And if you do drop off the high ground, well, now the roles are reversed, where the attacking team now has control over this insanely strong high ground, and the defending team is now on the ground and has to try and fight against it. So you can just set up your supports up here, you put your soldier up here, you put your other DPS up here, I don't know. Soldiers is a character I see played a lot. You can also run a Cassidy, you can run a good old Hanjo. I love Hanjo. He's so fun. But yeah, you just put them up here, they just play the high ground, you put your tank down there, they can cap point and brawl, and usually that will secure you the win. Because they either have to fight on point, which at that point, you have control over all of this high ground and can do whatever you want with it, or they try and take high ground, but if they don't have a full mobile team comp, it can be very hard to do so because they can't really get that much support. Like if they are running like two hit scans, the hit scan can't teleport up here with the diva. The diva has to come up here alone and you can just kind of spread her with the power of two DPS and two supports that are set up here. So yeah, that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and this can maybe save your life if you ever get stuck on New Bonnie. Oh wait, I forgot. How I would fix this map. I don't know about the second or third points. I think they just need a little bit more cover throughout them for the defending team to make use of. But at least for this first point, what I think that they need to do is one of two things. One... Add some stairs here. Just a little staircase that takes you from here and takes you up to this high ground. This way you can run a brawl style comp or have a dive comp and actually be able to support them by holding this angle. It would still be weak to anyone who is on this side, so I don't think it would be too insanely powerful, but it would just add more options for the attackers to take advantage of. Now, the other thing, maybe if they don't do that, want to add something that's not as good, but can still help the attacking team a lot, 
is to possibly put a passageway that goes from here to here on the other side. It might be a bit weird, but it just gives the attackers a way to engage that isn't made. So you could come through here. So instead of having to go main and try and go this way, which you'd almost certainly die if you tried to flank that way, which is why you're basically forced to go through this way to get to this area. Instead, attackers will have the option to go through here. They can have control over this little area, and then they can kind of peel out, and this is a much more doable rotation. So now they have control of this area. And they can play around here. Which I don't think is insanely strong, but it's something that could happen and be pretty useful for some sneaky plays. But more importantly, they can go up here and get access to this area. So it just adds an alternative flank route that still gets you back here. So you can do the same thing of go up here force the defenders off of this high ground, and now you take advantage of the high ground. I'd also add something to this tiny little room, because I almost never see this tiny room used for engagements, because you're just kind of locked in here if you come in it. It maybe comes into play sometimes as a last ditch attempt to live and hide behind this. But other than that, it, it will just add a little bit to it. Add some more rotations and some more flank routes. So yeah, now that's actually the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Give me your kidney. I could use it. I'm very poor. I'm in crippling debt. Anyways, thank you. Until next time, see ya.